A young girl by the name of Natalie always presents her family as perfect in her blogs. But she's put to the test and has to reveal the not-so-sweet reality of her family when a reporter comes to interview them. The movie begins with Natalie writing for her blog. She reminisces back to when they started making pine goods and all the trials and errors they faced. Christmas is her favorite time of the year and also the busiest. The whole family gathers together and makes scented candles. The house smells like pine trees and cinnamon. Natalie calls it the perfect Christmas scent. She praises her grandpa, Carlos, for working hard and making different types of Christmas toys and trinkets. She appreciates her family's Christmas traditions and considers them to be magical and important. She mentions some of the traditions they have, such as putting marshmallow snowmen in their cocoa, the grand Christmas dance in town, and singing carols around their piano. Her writing is interrupted when Lisa comes in and tells her that Mr. Prentice came to place an order. He says that he is interested in learning everything about the family-owned business. Natalie tells him that the Pine Valley Farm opened in 1937 as a Christmas tree farm and has been in her Aunt Mary's family possession ever since. She tells him that they expanded their business a couple of years ago by bringing candles, essential oils, and soaps into it. Their products are made from pines and each and every product is handmade at the farm. They offer to show him around the farm, thinking that he isn't impressed. He shocks them when he says that he needs 500 pine goods before Christmas. Mr. Prentice says that he was very excited when he found out about them through their blog. He wants to purchase from a family-owned business rather than from some cooperation. Natalie tries to tell him that they aren't a real family, but Lisa interrupts her and says that they will sign the contract. Mr. Prentice leaves and Natalie asks Lisa what she's doing. She says that Mr. Prentice wants to buy something from a family-owned business and he believes they are an actual family because of her blogs. Natalie says that she never wanted to mislead anyone, but she calls Mary, Aunt Mary, because she was her mother's best friend, and she calls Carlos her grandpa, because Elsa does too. Lisa tells her that she can be sorry all she wants, but they have to get to work. Natalie agrees and wishes she had more time to finish the order. Lisa tells her that her friend, Dave, will be coming to help them, and Natalie gets excited, as she knows Lisa likes him. Lisa tries to deny that she likes him and says that they've been just friends since high school, but Natalie doesn't believe her. Lisa leaves and Natalie goes back to her blog. She finishes writing it by saying that there will be a surprise involving romance. An investigative journalist finishes reading the article and asks his boss what she wants him to do with it. She tells him that the magazine is planning on writing about family-owned businesses and she wants him to write the article. He needs to get back to work, especially after the scandal he faced, he had made an error in his article about college admissions. The journalist says that the story won't magically restore his reputation, but his boss tells him that it's more about getting him back on track mentally rather than restoring his reputation. She tells him that she knows how much Christmas means to him and it would be great for him to relive some of the traditions with the family at Pine Valley. He agrees on doing it and before his boss leaves, she tells him that he needs to check the background information a couple of times before he submits it to her. The next morning, Carlos and Natalie are making soaps. Their work is interrupted when Elsa asks Carlos to take her to the town to see Santa. Carlos tries to tell her that he has to help Natalie, but the kid won't change her mind. Natalie tells Carlos to go with Elsa and says that she will be fine on her own. Natalie must have been too confident about it because she finds herself in chaos, trying to finish everything on time. The journalist arrives at their house and knocks on the door. Natalie opens it and he asks for Lisa. Natalie thinks that it's Lisa's friend Dave, so she rushes him into the kitchen so he can help her. The journalist goes along as he thinks that he may find out something else if he pretends to be Dave. He tells her that the farm sounds too good to be true and he doesn't believe that they make their products themselves. He asks her about their ingredients and Natalie tells him that their soaps are made with glycerin from their trees. She shows him the essential oils and tells him that they make them from their pines. Lisa and Mary walk in, so Natalie informs them that Dave just got here. Lisa says that he isn't Dave, so Natalie panics. The journalist says that he tried to tell her but couldn't resist getting to know some insider information. He introduces himself as Josh Sims and says that he works at the Southern County Lifestyle magazine. He says that he wants to do an article on the whole family and that makes all of them tense up. Lisa suggests Natalie gives Josh an interview and he can go back home in an hour. He tells them that he will need more time because he wants to get to know more about them as a family and their traditions. He proceeds to name all of them, shocking the family even more. They all realize that he has done a lot of research about them, so their secret is in danger of being exposed. Natalie tells him that they need to have a family meeting, as she escorts Josh out of the house. She tells him to come back the next day, and they will do an interview. Aunt Mary asks them to explain, and Natalie suggests they have a family meeting. 
Natalie tells her everything, and insists that they can't afford to lose Mr. Prentice's order. Lisa says that they will have to pretend, until the reporter is gone, so they'll be able to make Mr. Prentice's order. Mary says that she doesn't like lying to people, so she decides to come clean. She reveals that the farm is in tax debt, and the order could help pay it off. Lisa and Natalie realize that if they don't complete the order, they will have to close the farm. Carlos chimes in and says that he doesn't like lying, but he is willing to do whatever it takes to make sure Mary doesn't lose her farm and they can all stay together. Mary says that focusing more on Christmas traditions won't be bad at all. Natalie smiles and says that she had always wanted to spend Christmas with a big family. Lisa gets excited and says that if they do it, they need to work on the details. They settle on pretending that Natalie and Lisa are sisters, and Carlos and Mary will pretend that they're husband and wife. The next morning comes, and Josh goes to the family's house. He is greeted by Natalie, and she tries to rush him into finishing the interview faster. She tells him that it's Christmas time, so he must want to get back to his family as soon as possible. He tells her that he doesn't have a family, and he had been raised by his grandparents, on a farm similar to the Pine Valley. They take a walk around the pine trees, and Natalie makes sure to tell him the facts. She tells him that they grow four types of pine trees on the farm, which usually take two to three years to grow. She mentions that the biggest pine tree they had ever grown, had grown for ten years. The tree has been donated to the town, and she says that it is around twelve feet tall. He asks her to be more precise, but she tells him that she isn't sure. He asks her about the story of how their business started. Natalie tells him that her aunt was on a verge of losing the farm because she wasn't making enough profit, so she had the idea to make products from the trees, then sell them. She admits that because it was her idea, it also became her responsibility. She starts venting to Josh about how much she worries and the amount of work she has. She realizes that she may have crossed the line, so she asks Josh to leave that out of the article. He rips the note and hands it to her. He asks her about the family traditions next and mentions how most people think it's a waste of time. Natalie says that traditions are what bond people and they make them forget about the harsher reality of the world. The night comes and Natalie is writing for her blog again. She is happy to announce that Pine Valley will be hosting a wedding next year. Elsa comes up to her room and asks Natalie for her laptop. She wants to write a letter to Santa. Lisa comes in and asks Natalie about the article. She gets up from her desk and goes to Lisa. They start talking about the article. Elsa sneaks to the laptop and accidentally deletes a paragraph from the blog. It makes it look like Natalie is the one getting married. Aunt Mary comes and tells the girls that they need to come to dinner, so they all leave. They have dinner and Josh compliments Mary's cooking. Carlos chimes in and compliments Mary's cooking as well. Josh takes the opportunity to ask Carlos and Mary how they met. Mary tries to come up with a story, but Carlos saves the situation. He says that they had met when he came across Mary's farm, looking for a job. He says that the most beautiful woman had opened the door. Mary adds that she had invited him to come in because he had the kindest eyes. Josh keeps asking them to continue the story, so Natalie tells him that it is late, and they should all head to bed. She tells him that they get up early, so that's why they need to go to bed soon. Josh tells them that they cannot go to bed yet, because the Christmas tree ceremony is taking place in town. He assumes that they will attend it, especially because the farm's tree will be put up. Everyone's faces drop, but they quickly pull themselves together and thank Josh for reminding them. All of them leave in a hurry. They arrive there and Natalie walks side by side with Josh. He says that the place is beautiful and she agrees. He gets confused and asks why she's so blown away when she sees the tree every year. Natalie realizes what she's done and tries to redeem the situation but ends up saying too much. Josh tells her that he has to speak to the mayor and Natalie gets relieved that Josh didn't catch her slip up. One of the kids Elsa is playing with notices that Mary and Carlos are holding hands and asks Elsa about it. She tells him that it is a secret before she runs off to them. She calls Mary her grandma while winking and the adults wonder how she found out about the plan. Lisa gets a call from Dave and she steps aside to take it. Josh comes to Natalie and tells her that the tree she was talking about earlier was 16.3 feet tall. Natalie says that she was close, but Josh tells her that she wasn't close enough. The Christmas tree lighting ceremony starts, and everyone has a smile on their face as the tree lights up. After the ceremony is over, Josh and Natalie take a walk around the park. She tells him about her grandma's knitted pillows, with various sentimental quotes on them. He tells her about the different ornaments his grandma used to pick for the top of the tree every year. They stop walking so they can admire the star-covered night sky. Natalie calls the stars perfect and admits that she never takes the time to look at the stars. Josh turns to her and so does she and when they're about to kiss, they get interrupted by some random people wishing them a Merry Christmas. They part ways but agree on meeting the next day at 10am. Josh goes home to work on the article and checks the Pine Valley blog. 
He reads the article about the wedding venues and finds out that Natalie is getting married. When Natalie comes home, she decides to look through some of Josh's articles. She finds out about Josh's previous scandal and that the article had made him lose all of his credibility. Lisa comes into the room and Natalie tells her that Josh hopes to get his credibility back with the article he is writing about the farm. He also has said that he won't let anyone lie to him anymore, but that is exactly what the family is doing. Lisa says that she knows it's bad, but hopes that no one will figure it out. Natalie thinks that they should come clean, but remembers the big order they still have to complete. She just wishes she knew how Josh would be like, beforehand. Josh comes in and asks her what she's talking about. Natalie tries to come up with something, but he tells her that he knows. He asks to speak with her privately, so they go into the living room. He apologizes for the way he acted the previous night, and she gets confused. He says that he read the article she posted on the blog, as he hands her his phone to read it. Natalie realizes that she had made a mistake while writing the article, so that's why he thinks she's getting married. Lisa comes and reads the article, as well. Both of them stand, confused, and shocked, so Josh asks them whether they made up the news about her getting married, as a publicity stunt. They deny it, and he apologizes for assuming that, but says that he didn't want Natalie to think that he had behaved inappropriately the night before. Natalie tells him that he didn't act inappropriately, and that there's nothing to apologize about. Josh asks to meet her fiancé, and Natalie lies, saying that he is traveling. As they're talking, someone knocks on the door. Lisa goes to get it, and sees Dave standing in front of her. She quickly asks him to go along with whatever she says, and introduces him as Natalie's fiancé, to Josh, when they get inside. Dave says he has to unpack, and Josh offers to help him. They go outside, and the girls feel relieved. Lisa asks Natalie about the article, and she says that she doesn't know what happened, but assumes that a part of it was deleted, because a paragraph was missing. Natalie asks Lisa if it bothers her, having to pretend to be with Dave, and she reassures her that it is okay with her. Natalie looks through some Christmas carols, so they can practice singing them together. She tells the others that she has prepared some sheets, and asks someone to play the piano. They all look at each other and realize that none of them know how to play the piano. Elsa says that she knows how to play it, so they let her do it. She starts with the opening notes of Jingle Bells, but stops soon after, because that is all she knows. Josh and Dave come into the living room, and Josh says that Jingle Bells was the first carol he learned to play on the piano. They all sing some carols together, but they soon have to get back to work. Natalie suggests he practices on the piano, while they complete some orders. Josh offers to help, and even though Natalie tries to stop him, he ends up making soap along with them. While making a candle, Josh notices that Dave is more flirtatious and friendly with Lisa than he is with his fiancé. He asks Dave how he and Natalie met, and he tells him that Lisa had introduced them. Josh tries to catch Dave slipping, so he asks him whether Natalie had moved to the farm before or after she started making the pine products. Lisa and Natalie chime in and answer differently. Dave saves the situation, but Josh asks him what job Natalie had before she started working on the farm. Dave says that she had previously worked at a spa. He starts complimenting Natalie and talks about her life achievements. He gets closer to her and hugs her from behind, which is when Lisa accidentally drops some spoons to the ground, being distracted by his words. Natalie tells Josh that she has to deliver some packages to town and drags him to the car. They arrive in town, and as Natalie is taking the deliveries into the store, she bumps into Mr. Prentice. She apologizes and asks whether everything's fine. He tells her that he's not fine, because he had to cancel an order, from a company. That will leave them with a huge hole in chain supplies. Josh asks him why they had to cancel, and Mr. Prentice tells him that everything that was told to him by another family-owned business, had been a lie. Mr. Prentice says that he can count on Pine Valley's authenticity, and that's when he comes up with an idea. He asks Natalie whether they could make another large order, and Natalie says that they can. Natalie and Josh get back home, and when they arrive, Josh asks her whether everything's okay, because she's been quiet on the way back. She tells him that she's fine, but has a lot on her mind. Josh tells her that he knows what's bothering her, and he knows it's about Dave. Natalie asks him what he means, and he tells her that they're not a good match. Natalie looks at him weirdly, and he promises that he doesn't have anything against Dave, but he thinks that he is a bit too laid back. She asks him what is wrong with being like that, and he says that there's nothing wrong, but it doesn't seem like he would be her type. He calls her energetic, and could see her getting bored with Dave. Natalie says that Dave isn't boring, but Josh says that she needs someone, that can keep her on her feet. Natalie stops, and looks at him, before calling him arrogant. She says that he can't possibly think that he knows her, just because they spent a couple of days together, making soap. They get to the porch, and Natalie tells him that Dave has everything she needs, even with his Daveness. Josh gets confused, and asks her what she means by that. They are met by the sight of Dave, chopping wood on the front porch. Natalie looks at him, with dreamy eyes. She snaps out of it, and tells Josh that Dave is there to help them, whenever they need help. 
Josh gets jealous and goes to chop some wood himself. The men get competitive as they chop wood, without stopping. Lisa takes Natalie inside and asks her about Josh. She tells her that Josh isn't buying her relationship with Dave, so Lisa tells her that she will ask Dave to be more romantic with her. They get some hot cocoa and head outside. They find themselves distracted by the view of the boys, but Natalie snaps out of it and tells them that they should have a hot cocoa break. They sit down by the porch and Josh asks when they'll be picking out a Christmas tree and bringing it back to the house. Natalie says that they'll be doing it soon and goes to get the others so they can go. All of them go to the valley and Natalie apologizes to Carlos for pulling him out of work. He tells him that they need to stop working from time to time, plus the view out there is beautiful. Natalie smiles before she goes to check on Josh. She finds him taking pictures of the trees. She tells him that they're at the Great Groove and all the trees around them are the main ones. He says that the place is wonderful and could imagine all the trees being lit up with Christmas lights. He turns to Natalie and apologizes for what he said about Dave. He admits to being arrogant but says that he just wants her to be happy because she deserves it. Natalie says that she is happy and even though they have a lot of work, it is the best Christmas she has had in a long time. Natalie suggests they go back, and Josh asks to mark the GPS location. Natalie says that the readers must not think it's that important. But Josh says that it's important for him. He assumes that Natalie had searched for him online, and had seen his article, but she reasons that it must have been an honest mistake. He says that he knew that he was making a mistake, but he chose to ignore his gut. Natalie starts feeling bad about lying to him, but feels even worse when Josh tells her that if his next article isn't truthful, he could lose his job. After they had chosen the tree, Josh sits down with each of them to have an interview. He asks all of them the same thing. It is known that Pine Valley has a tradition of giving handmade gifts for Christmas. Could you give me a hint about what you'll be giving this year? All of them say the same thing, that they don't want to spoil the surprise, even though there isn't one at all. The night of the dance comes, and Lisa is looking at photos of her and Dave, while feeling a little bit of sadness. She goes to get Natalie, and sees that she isn't ready. Natalie says that she's sorry for putting them through all this chaos. She says that she's trying to find out where it all went wrong. She admits that they didn't feel like lies when she wrote them, and they don't feel like lies now. She asks Lisa whether that makes her a bad person, but Lisa insists that she is one of the best people she knows. Lisa and Natalie arrive at the party, and Dave greets them. He tells Natalie that she is beautiful, and puts a corsage on her. He asks her for a dance, and they get to the dance floor. Lisa smiles, but her sadness can be seen in her eyes. Mr. Prentice comes to her, and calls them a charming couple. Lisa smiles, but can't seem to hide her jealousy, so she excuses herself. Natalie is dancing with Carlos, and Mary with Josh, but then, they decide to switch partners. Natalie and Josh get close, and seem to get lost in each other's eyes. Their moment is interrupted by Josh's phone ringing, so he excuses himself. He takes the call, and it's his boss. She tells him that she has found some discrepancies in the blog, and wants him to look over them. The last dance comes, so Dave invites Natalie for a dance. Lisa watches, with tears in her eyes, and can't seem to handle it, so she decides to leave in a rush. She ends up knocking over a waiter, so she starts apologizing, and crying. She runs out of the place as fast as she can, and Dave runs after her. After the ceremony is over, everyone seems to have left. Josh finds Natalie, freezing outside. He asks her why she hasn't left, and she tells him that she has texted everyone, so someone will come for her eventually. Josh says that he has left his car at the hotel, but meanwhile, he finds a carousel, and they get on it. Dave gets to the house, and he sees Lisa as he walks in. He asks her what is going on, and she tries to lie to him, saying that she's okay. He asks her whether she's mad at him, and she insists that she isn't. She tries to pretend, but fails, as tears fill her eyes. She's honest with him, and tells him that she thought that he had come to the farm to see her. Dave says that he did come to see her, and admits that he has been crazy about her, for years. He says that she had asked him to pretend so he can help them out, so he never had the chance to tell her. On their ride back, Josh asks Natalie about the farm. She answers all of his questions truthfully, and reasonably. He thanks her for making him feel so at home, especially after the year he had. Natalie smiles, and says that everyone deserves a second chance, and we should make sure we do better in the future. She says that she has not felt Christmas as much in the last few years, but seeing it through Josh's eyes, is what made her appreciate it again. Josh tells Natalie that she is the most honest person he has ever met, and she feels awful, so she decides to tell him the truth. She looks him in the eyes, but realizes that she can't do it, so she says that they should enjoy their night. They get home, and see Dave and Lisa together. Josh loses it, and attacks Dave with a pillow. They get into a fight. Dave ends up breaking a vase, and that's when the fight stops. Natalie has had enough, so she tells Josh everything, from the debt, to the wedding. Josh can't believe it, he has been fooled again. Natalie tries to explain everything, but he leaves immediately. Mary and Carlos come in, and Natalie tells them that they're going to lose the farm. Josh gets home, and writes the truth about the farm and Natalie, he even calls her ugly names. Natalie gets her laptop and deletes all the articles from the website, even the website itself. Josh and Natalie contemplate calling each other, but don't have the courage to do it, after all. 
Josh writes the article, but can't make up his mind whether to send it or not. Bedtime comes, and Lisa and Mary see Natalie working. They ask her whether she's going to bed, and she says that she can't, not until she figures the situation out. Mary motions for Lisa to leave, so she can talk to Natalie alone. Natalie says that it's all her fault, but Mary tells her that it isn't, because all of them agreed to it. Mary says that Natalie has done so much, and she deserves a break. Mary admits that she misses Natalie's mother around Christmas time, more than any other. She tells Mary that she didn't know what to do, after her mother passed away, but getting that call from her, was life-changing. Natalie says that the farm feels like her home, and she has always wanted a big family, but she feels like she just lost it. Mary comforts her, saying that the farm isn't her family, but they are, so she could never lose them. Mary tells her that no matter what, truth is the most important in the end, and she believes Natalie knows that, as well. The next morning comes, and Natalie finds Josh at the cafe. She hands him his scarf he had forgotten. He tells her that the article is already written, so there's no need for any more lies. Natalie says that she's there to see Mr. Prentice, not him. She goes to Mr. Prentice and tells him the truth, about the traditions, and all of the details on her blog. She says that she has removed the blog posts, and written a new one, and she would be glad if he took the time to read it. Natalie says that she knows they might lose the deal with Mr. Prentice, but she doesn't want to lie to anyone, anymore. Josh comes to her, and Natalie starts apologizing. She says that everyone wishes they could come to apologize, but can't, because they're packing. Josh gets confused, and she tells him that they lost the farm, and have to move. She asks for one last thing from him, and that is that he doesn't rush into publishing the article immediately, but takes the time to think about the truth. He says that he won't, and asks her a question. He asks her why she had written all of those articles. She says that writing those articles, was her way of wishing for a big family. Natalie goes back home, and continues packing. She tells Lisa that she's going to get her old job back, and asks what she's going to do. Lisa says that Dave's firm is hiring, and Dave thinks she'll be a perfect match. Mary and Carlos come in, and tell them that something else has come out of the whole situation, as well. Mary lifts her hand, so her engagement ring can be clearly seen. Everyone cheers, and Natalie can't believe that it all happened so fast. Mary tells her that they've been feeling like that for each other, for a long time, but it took a long time until they had the courage to admit it. Mary suggests going to the city and getting some dinner, so all of them go, except for Natalie. After dinner, they all sit down, back at home, for hot cocoa. Lisa stands in the middle of the room, and pulls a basket from behind her. She says that she has homemade gifts for everyone. And Natalie says that she has only made that up for the blog. Soon after, all of them give each other homemade gifts, as it is a tradition they actually want to start. There is a ring from the door, and Natalie goes to get it. She opens the door, just to see a trail of lights leading somewhere. She follows the lights, and sees the Christmas trees lit up, with the most beautiful Christmas lights. Josh comes to her, and says that he wanted her to see the traditions she writes about in her posts, but in real life. Natalie thanks him, for helping her realize she had a big family, after all. He tells her that he hopes that isn't the only thing she realized, as he points to the mistletoe. He leans in to kiss her, but their kiss is interrupted, by the whole family, rushing to them. Lisa tells her that Mr. Prentice has called to tell them, that he's keeping the order after all. Natalie turns to Josh, and asks him whether he had any part in it. He tells her that he had convinced Mr. Prentice to read the article. Natalie smiles, and pulls him in for a kiss. Snow starts falling, and the family enjoys it together, surrounded by the Christmas lights. 